Hello and welcome to CEO at Work. Well, we are back with another season of CEO at Work, and this time my guest on the show is someone well, he's young, but he manages India's biggest residential real estate company. His stock has been a multi-bagger post-COVID, and in terms of really changing the dynamics, Abhishek Loda has changed the rules of how the real estate business in India is moving. So, what really has been the secret sauce, or what really is the binding factor for? Abhishek Loda and for macro tech developers. Much more on that on this edition of CEO at Work with me, Nikunj Dalm. So nice to have you on ETNA. Thank you for joining. My yes. pleasure. Very good to be with so, you. So we are at one of your marquee properties. What is this property? Where are we standing? I can see a brilliant lawn, a lovely building, and a very modern uh, amenity setup. So where are we? We are at the iconic World Towers in Central Mumbai. Okay. Uh, the development. We are. You're right now in the sort of amenity area. You can see uh, the families uh, playing various kinds of things. There's a cricket game going on. The mandir in the background. There are other kids running around, and this uh, really is a representation of uh, you know our ethos that when we build a development, uh, when we sell a unit or a home, it's not only about the four walls, but it's about the lifestyle, mm -hmm. and that's what the World Tower sort of encompasses. It has everything that anyone. Uh, dream or imagine of, and many many people who've visited here or live over here say that they never want to step out uh, because this has you know everything that they can uh, they can hope to have. Uh, but we don't do this only at you know sort of the central Mumbai or South Mumbai location. We do this across uh, all our developments because we truly believe that you know how people live really shapes their attitude. It really affects what they dream of, what they aspire for, and we hope we can make a small difference to that. The minute I say Loda, it is grandeur which comes to everyone's mind. The minute I say Abhishek Loda, young, dynamic, someone who's changed the rules of uh, real estate and under 50. Do you like this this recall of yours? I think you know uh, we we love for our company and the projects to be recalled. Uh, I think my recall is is quite frankly not very important. The real estate sector always follows a cycle. It is believed that it is a two to seven to ten year cycle, and a new cycle has started post COVID. And we are three years into this cycle, and this cycle is at least another five six years to go. Is that a logical interpretation? I think you know this idea that the cycle has some kind of predefined length is a uh, not a factual uh, situation. We had a very tough period for housing, and the factors for that are understandable, and that was between thirteen and uh, twenty. Uh, I think what we are witnessing right now is year three of a much longer cycle in our view. Maybe it's 15 years, maybe it's even longer than that. Because India is going through what transition is happening as a once in a lifetime of our nation, which is we are moving from a low income country to a mid income country. And as that happens, a huge number of households, which have historically never been home ownership capable, will become home ownership capable. And as that happens, the demand will continue to scale up and the supply will struggle to keep up. This happened in the US from the end of the Second World War to the mid-1960s. It happened in China from the mid-90s to the middle of the last decade. And it's happened in many, many other uh, geographies where housing causes the creation of the middle class and housing benefits immensely from the creation of the middle class. So this is the sector which will drive our economy for the next 15 years. Uh, I feel uh, quite confident this is a very uh, long cycle, unlike uh, the typical cycle, cyclical nature, which may be five, some people say five to seven years, you mentioned seven to 10 years, but whatever that may be. So one is demand. Demand remains strong, which is, you know, a builder is in a good spot because demand is strong and your units which you're selling itself. Second is price appreciation. Are we in for both? Yes, I think uh, the reality of the fact is that 50% uh, of Indians uh, have, 50% uh, of the wealth of Indian households is in housing. Yes. And you saw the impact of housing, house prices falling or remaining flat in the period from 17 to 20. And that affected the entire economy because consumption goes down, confidence goes down. Mm -hmm. So what we would love to see is that home prices rise around or just below wage growth. Mm -hmm. 
so that affordability keeps improving but at the same time people who own homes feel richer I mean, I'll give you a statistic and it's quite stunning someone a family which would buy a home today 50 lakh rupee home today that home would be worth three and a half crores in 2047 so when our honorable prime minister says that 2047 is the year india becomes kind of a developed nation mm -hmm. you can imagine that for a middle class household to feel three crore rupees richer mm -hmm. only because of their house mm -hmm. then everything else that they earn can be used for other purposes so the home is a huge creator of wealth for the middle class or anybody who owns a home mm -hmm. and therefore it's very very important that home prices go up they have to go up modestly but they have to go up but the, so we've addressed the big picture, which everybody wants to know from India's biggest real estate developer, residential real estate developer, outlook on cycle and outlook on prices. Now let's focus on shareholders. The shareholders are also happy lot. Post-COVID, magical things have happened to the real estate stocks and your stock also. What has changed post-COVID for you? I think what is, uh, means we, I can't comment about anything about pre-COVID and what happened to stocks pre-COVID because we were not a listed firm. No, I'm generally saying, uh, for your uh, group per se, you just cut out of, you just cut out and you're just going from strength to strength. Post yeah, I think what's happened is a culmination of a lot of pain that the sector went through between 2012 and 2020. Uh, we had very good regulations like RERA, we had other things like demonetization, GST, the insolvency and bankruptcy code affecting the sector. Uh, we also had a large number of the non-banking financial companies, which I, you cover closely, uh, who took large real estate exposures, lent to developers who were not meant to be in this business at the scale that they were being lent to, and that created oversupply. When Island FS imploded at the end of 2018, the correction process started then, not because of COVID. And now you have a situation where consumers have aware that they should only buy from the best brands. They want quality, they also want certainty and trust. And that in turn has led to the situation where you see that these stock prices of the top developers are doing well because the people or stock investors realize that not only is India going from low income to mid income, not only is the quantum of housing demand huge and unlikely to be met anytime soon, but also that the consumer preference has dramatically shifted to uh, you know, very, very select brands or players. And just like in any branded business, you will have those players getting the majority of the demand and therefore the profitability. Luda has uh, bulk of its land bank and also future projects in Mumbai. Some would say that that is concentration, but is that a conscious strategy? We definitely have uh, overweight on Mumbai. Mumbai is India's deepest housing market. It is India's largest housing market. It has everything from homes from 30 lakhs to 300 crores and everything in between. Uh, we do not like concentration and therefore even in Mumbai last year, we had a total of, uh, we totally had 30 operating projects last year, 25-ish of them in Mumbai. So yes, we are overweight on Mumbai. We very much like being Mumbai's largest real estate player and uh, you know being able to serve all the segments in this city uh, we are expanding now into uh, pune we have five projects now in pune we have one project already launched in bangalore uh, earlier this year which did well uh, in november which did very very well the launch was very successful we'll have one more project launching in bangalore in the next four to six months so we are broadening our base but absolutely we are very happy and very uh, proud of the fact that we are Mumbai's leading developer and therefore are you know able to shape the future of India's financial capital and India's biggest housing market. Uh, you've gone on record and you've said that we are not a real estate company, we are an FMCG company. You've started thinking like this. You're consciously looking at reducing your debt, consciously thinking design. Real estate earlier was to real estate builders earlier were thinking differently, but you are thinking in terms of FMCG and design. What does that mean? I think you know. Uh, it's a consumer good, uh, it's not fast moving, uh, so uh, I will put it in the consumer goods category. Uh, and uh, I think our business model is set up to treat land as a raw material, uh, produce uh, what the market needs, have reasonable appreciation for the product, but not be you know price maximizers. And most importantly, understand the consumer and serve the entire spectrum of needs of the consumer from the time they buy to the time they move in to how they live after. It means we completed the world task several years ago, but you know, today, even today we manage, you know, all the facilities and amenities because we want to make sure that the experience does not deteriorate. And that really is our mindset. In terms of our business model, we are a very people-centric organization. 
we focus on building deep talent pools we're very decentralized and empowered in our way of operations and you know you uh, you can see that is uh, uh, you know a way of working that any a uh, good quality company in any sector would work so yes we think about ourselves as a consumer goods company and our product is housing uh let's look at uh, the debt the favorite question for all television anchors when we meet real estate companies you consciously reduced your debt net debt to equity is less than 1 now less than 0.5 now yeah i mean less than half now and if this current run rate continues fi24 technically you will be net debt free yeah means i think uh, if we uh, uh, if we were uh, wish to we could become a net cash company over the next 2 to 2 and a half years so not fy24 fy24 will literally end in 4 months so we will not become net cash in that period but yes in a short duration thereafter uh, we are very conscious of being very conservative on our leverage we think the opportunity is very long but there can always be black swan events there can be other things which can go wrong for a short period of time and as an organization we want to be growing and scaling up in the most risk free or lowest risk manner and in that having very low leverage is very very important for us so we are very conscious that uh, we want to continuously and always keep debt below 0.5 times equity and below 1x of operating cash flow and in the good part of the cycle we want to be even lower than that so that in a tough part of the cycle if we have to come up we'll come up to that level but if you're confident that this cycle is a long cycle you have a brand and even if you let's say keep your debt to equity ratio to 2 or 2 and a half it's fairly acceptable but but that will also give you a lot of growth runway it it could but we are of the view that we can you know keeping our balance sheet very very conservative we can grow at 20 per, our pre sales and top line at 20% and deliver 20% roe i think uh, if our internal cash flow generations are that strong that we can sustain our 20% growth then there is no reason for us to add on risk uh, in terms of uh, the concentration what builders have you are a bombay based real estate company prestige is a bangalore based real estate company dlf is a delhi based real estate company is that the differentiating factor now for all real estate companies that grow in the areas where you have the core market i think everybody needs a core market uh, there are probably 3 4 5 players in the country right now who are of scale are have a brand uh, where uh, consumers are aware of uh some some brands are much more uh valued and sought after others may not be as much but broadly there are a very handful of real estate companies in our sector like in any large sector uh where the brands are strong enough to scale up and everybody has a as a core market a home market ours is mumbai and uh these brands some of these brands will travel well as we saw with our launch in bangalore where we were sold out in less than 72 hours of the first launch that we did uh others will travel less well so i think the uh, the operating models of different companies will differ based on the depth of their management capability and the strength of their brand now you guided for pre sales and two quarters you achieved 48% of that the second half this time you had diwali dashera the second half traditionally is a better half so can i safely assume that if i put data point you are on course not only to meet your guidance but to beat your guidance uh i would say is that you know uh, the 20% growth that we promised last year uh, we uh, we of course promised it uh, being uh, taking into account uh, you know what we felt the year was going to be like and it looks like the year is on track to meet that guidance is there a volume growth advantage which you have in that 20% yes of course like i said we like to keep price growth modest not not low and not very high uh we like to keep price growth a little below wage growth so this year wage growth in the country is going to be around 9% we are targeting price growth of between 6 to 8% and therefore the rest of it is all going to be volume so we are growing our volumes uh by about 13 14% uh this year partly from existing locations and partly from new locations this is the 2023 uh third quarter of fy24 hypothetically if you having a same conversation at the same place uh, apart from more load up hours what else do you think we are likely to be discussing in terms of size in terms of where you think you would have reached 5 years i think you know scaling up and sizing is one part of the journey uh we of course are very committed to you know continuing to scale up in a predictable manner in a low risk and predictable manner which i think differentiates our business from some of the uh, uh, others who may be uh, in this industry uh but i think beyond that what 
I think uh, our commitment to uh, being a purpose-led organization which gives back to society and makes a positive difference to society, not just in the jobs that we create or the uh, great ecosystems that we have for people to live or work with, but also how we use our capabilities, how we use our intellect to make an impact on society beyond just the business that we do is a very important part of, of what we exist for. And I think you will see that you know uh, some of the initiatives that we are taking will make a bigger impact on society in these next five years. So perhaps you'll spend a little bit more time discussing those. Fantastic. There was a time when real estate stocks, in a sense, had a very ugly reputation. They were considered to be the ugly ducklings. But a lot of things have changed now. What to your mind has led to the change? And when I speak to Loda, when I speak to Prestige, when I speak to DLF, every real estate company is very debt conscious. They're talking about growth and taking predictable risk. What has changed? What has happened? See, there are, there's, you can, you can let the, look at the real estate um, a stock performance pre Loda's listing and post Loda's yes, listing. <laughs> so you've got the corporate governance standard back. <laughs> I, I don't know what we've done, but I think we've been very clear in what we want to be. Uh, we, uh, like I said, predictable, low risk, uh, focused on the highest standards of governance and focused on the highest standards of ESG. Uh, we uh, are on track to not only be net zero on our carbon emissions uh, in 2024 on scope one and scope two, we promise we'll get there in 2035, we're getting them in 2024. But really, you know, across the board, and I can get into more detail on that if that's of interest to you. Uh, but we, we truly believe what we brought to the table is a organization which uh, is um, uh, in the real estate space, has people have not seen an organization thinking and acting in this manner. And I think that's what uh, our share, we, we are thankful to our shareholders for their initial trust and I hope that we have kept up that trust and you know our peers and competitors are very smart uh, they have also seen uh, what uh, is uh, uh, valued uh, in the marketplace and I think some of them have also started following which is great for the industry because if the top four or five players start acting in, in this kind of consistent way uh, deliver great growth predictable growth uh, great product and at the same time uh, improve governance and you know uh, lower risk then why should this industry not be valued in the manner that you know any really well organized well run industry is valued i can see families have already moved in so what's the current occupancy in some of your big projects uh, occupancy across the board tends to be very high because most people after 2040 most of the sales have been for end users mm -hmm. and therefore occupancy levels tend to be very very high mm -hmm. uh, depending I think I think once you're about 18 months into completion of a particular building you hit occupancy levels which are you know uh, high 90s mid to high 90s okay now I'm going to ask a question perhaps on behalf of our viewers and your shareholders uh, everyone has a different time frame when they're investing in the company so in three years, what they should expect from you? In five years, what they should expect from you? And beyond that, I think we'll discuss the next press. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I, I think short term, medium term, uh, which is the three and, fi and five year uh, sort of timeline that you mentioned. Mm. I think what you can expect from us is uh, predictable, uh, low risk, 20% growth in our top line and 20% ROE. That you can do on this large base also. Yes. And keeping the debt to equity under under one. Under I means our, our, our ceiling for that we've set for ourselves is 0.5 times. How did you handle the stress of 2012 to 2018 or 2013 to 2020? That was the real testing and the hard time for the real estate sector. Yeah, so I think you're right. Uh, I think it was a t it's a tough time for the sector, both from the financial uh, period after L F F blew up, 2019 and 2020 were particularly uh, challenging. Uh, also, demand had slowed down from 2016 onward, so that uh, you know sort of cascaded the set of challenges. But like I said, you know, I think uh, in the in the tough times, the tough who stand out, and you know, all these things that you see around us were built in that period. And what you see today is that there is not an inch of compromise. So that is the ethos of our organization. We don't compromise. Uh, we, we do whatever it takes to deliver on our promises. And I think that's what consumers value about us, is that we pay attention to the smallest detail and we make sure that everything that we promise is delivered. And that combination is what uh, you know, keeps us going. We have great people. We have deep conviction that we are doing the right thing. And therefore, even in the tough times, we are always together as a team. In that tough period from 
mid to late 2018 to early 2020, uh, where the outside world was all writing off Loda, not one senior person in our organization left, which really is validation about how people, th how our people uh, know what we are doing is the right thing, and how much we toge together work as a as one unified team. The fact that you had uh, debt raised by global bond and there was a lot of volatility in that global bond and then I remember we had engaging conversation on one of our shows. Uh, is there something which you don't want to do again, never raise global debt, there's a lot of volatility there? I mean, I think we will not invest outside India. So the, that global that's bond, no. uh, that's a no. So that global bond was for an international investment and therefore, uh, you know, the idea of doing a global bond for uh, uh, for international investment, we we not do. I think, you know, all financial instruments, uh, including global bonds, uh, uh, are good and bad. It depends on the circumstance. Ultimately, if the underlying of the company is good mm -hmm. and that was a tougher time for the uh, for the company, uh, then, then I think uh, we are okay. We are not saying that we will never raise a global bond or not raise a global bond, uh, but we will not invest outside India. You know, I must share this with our viewers that uh, I've had engaging conversations with a lot of CEOs, but uh, the conversation I'm having with you about the real estate sector, you reputation change. You're changing the reputation of the entire real estate sector and the builder being honest, frank, giving numbers up front. Is that a thought out strategy? I think that's how we operate. I think people uh, who, who know us uh, know that that's how we operate. There is no strategy to this. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, we, we, we like to be straightforward and transparent. Life is too short to beat around the bush. So we've spoken a lot about numbers, but I'm sure you must have seen the movie uh, Wall Street, Gordon Gecko, right? There's a very famous line which in a sense has stayed with me, that every man on Wall Street is chasing a number. So is there a number Abhishek Loda is chasing? There is no number that I am chasing. Uh, I think, as I mentioned to you in a different context, that what our chase right now, and thankfully it's not defined uh, by numbers, is how much can we uh, make an impact on Indian society. Uh, so, you know, beyond the business and, and sustainably growing our business in the manner and the numbers that I spoke to you about, uh, uh, making sure that our people all feel valued and they can grow as individuals and in their careers. Uh, we, we really want to uh, now put our energy uh, and we believe we have that capacity and we have that commitment within our organization uh, to become the global leader uh, not uh, in, the, in the space of sustainable uh, built environments and to become the leader within India in terms of corporates caring about society and making a difference to society. What is one lesson which you learned from your father and what is one lesson you're giving to your children? Uh, it's, a very, uh, it's a very good uh, question. And, uh, you know, of course, needs me to reflect. Um, uh, but I think what I uh, admire most about my father and, and what I sort of, you know, uh, would like to pass on uh, to my children uh, is that uh, two things. One, uh, whatever you do, do the very best that can be done. And the second is while doing so, uh, you know, success will hopefully come, but remain grounded and remain humble. A lot has changed for real estate sector, but a thing, one thing has not changed. Everybody complains. We get sales calls. Yes. <laughs> Property lelo. <laughs> Book up change over. <laughs> no, I think I think that is a that is also a pain point which we are working to address. And by April next year, we will have a standard number at least from Loda, which will be well known to everybody. You can choose to receive calls from that number or not. And any other number who calls and claims they are calling on behalf of Loda <laughs> is not calling from Loda. Have you ever got a call from a sales team that Mr. Loda, we would like to sell you Loda property? I I, I I have gotten a call from the sales team. Yes. <laughs> so we both can complain actually. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so very much for having us over. Lovely My property. pleasure. And thank you very no, much. Thank you for and, making the time. And I must, you know, share it with our viewers that uh, if I look at the real transition for Macrotech Abhishek and for Loda developers, I guess it's absolutely incredible. The way how the structure and the way of the governance standards have really changed, I guess he's really truly setting a benchmark for the entire sector per se. So it's just been a phenomenal experience and a great walkabout with Abhishek Loda at one of its marquee properties.